Is humanity on the verge of self-destruction? Is there hope for our future? Through the centuries, the Blessed Mother has repeatedly played a crucial role in the reconciliation of humanity. Time and time again, through her unprecedented mediation as a mother of mercy, she has changed the course of history. The 20th century is no exception, with over 300 apparitions reportedly taking place all over the world. She comes armed with a peace plan for the world beginning in the 20th century with Fatima, Portugal. Fatima, Portugal, one of the most significant apparition sites of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It has been the focal point of extraordinary conversions and healings within the 20th century. The story begins in the spring of 1916, when the Angel of Peace, Saint Michael the Archangel, also known as the Angel of Portugal, appeared to three children three times prior to the appearances of Our Lady. On the third visit, the angel personally brought Holy Communion to the children, mentioning Jesus as being present in all the tabernacles of the world. During the following year, 1917, Our Lady appeared six times to the children, beginning on May 13th, asking them to come to the sheep pasture on the 13th of each month until October. Lucia dos Santos, age 10, was the eldest of the three, who along with her cousins Jacinta Marto, age 7, and Francisco Marto, age 9, witnessed the apparitions. It was on July 13, 1917, Our Lady gave a prophetic and solemn warning for the world. She asked for the consecration of Russia to her immaculate heart. If my wishes are fulfilled, Russia will be converted, and there will be peace. If not, then Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, bringing new wars and persecutions of the Church. The good will be martyred, and the Holy Father will have much to suffer. Certain nations will be annihilated, but in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me, and she will be converted, and the world will enjoy a period of peace. Our Blessed Mother promised a miracle would occur during the noon hour on October 13, 1917. An estimated 70,000 people crowded into the sheep pasture drenched by the rains. As promised, a great solar miracle occurred. The sun, looking like a ball of fire, appeared as if it were plunging to the earth, terrifying the people. Many thought they would die. After 12 minutes, the sun reverted to its normal position. The mud-soaked ground and the clothing of the people dried instantly. The solar phenomenon was a sign of great magnitude given by God. It confirmed the gravity of the messages given by Our Lady of Fatima. Later, Lucia, who became a Carmelite nun, explained that the rosary and the scapular are inseparable. Our Lady wants everyone to wear the brown scapular and to pray the rosary every day. Fatima was the first apparition site to be approved by the Catholic Church within the 20th century. What messages did Our Lady impart to the children 
and to the world at that time? There are four significant message points. First, daily duty, living chastely according to one's state in life. Second, prayer, particularly to pray the rosary. Third, Eucharistic reparation, communions of reparation on the first five Saturdays. Fourth, consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, along with wearing the brown scapula. Have we fulfilled the requests of the Blessed Mother? If not, shouldn't we begin now? With an increasing urgency, Our Lady has come again in other places to repeat the same message. Between the years 1917 and 1932, the world was troubled. The warnings had been given at Fatima, and now Our Lady chose, once again, to grace the earth with her presence by appearing in Borang, Belgium. Known as the Virgin with a Golden Heart, Our Lady appeared 35 times between November 29, 1932 and January 3, 1933. Five children saw Our Lady during this time in which the message of Fatima, one of prayer, sacrifice and devotion to the Immaculate Heart, was emphasized. As mediatrix of all graces, Our Lady promised to convert sinners. She also specifically requested a chapel to be built for pilgrims. Morang was the second apparition site to be approved within the century. It was in Morang that the Blessed Virgin Mary reminds us of her reign in heaven as Queen, our merciful mother. Just when the apparitions of Borang had ended, Our Lady appeared again in Belgium, this time in Bano. Our Lady proclaimed herself as the Virgin of the Poor to Mariette Becco as she approached her 12th birthday. The apparitions occurred eight times to Mariette, beginning in 1933. During one of the apparitions, Our Lady led Mariette to a little spring that flowed at the edge of the woods. Our Lady declared this spring of water as being reserved for all nations to relieve the sick. Many. Many documented healings have taken place over the years from this water, a spring for all nations. In 1949, the Bishop of Liège declared the accounts of the apparitions worthy of belief. This marked the approval of the third apparition within the 20th century. Our Lady came to Bano to remind us again that in God's plan, she is the essential link with Jesus. In the midst of economic depression, war, and atomic destruction, Our Lady continued with her commitment to save her children. She appeared frequently throughout the world, proclaiming herself under many titles, urging her children to pray and repent. During the 1960s, the world was in transition. Drugs, assassinations, war, and the erosion of family values filled the headlines of newspapers throughout the world. The 1960s were filled with confusion. Yet, in 1961, the Mother of God warned us again of impending problems to come. The place? Carabandal, Spain. On June 18, 1961, an angel appeared to four girls. Conchita Gonzalez, age 12, Jacinta Gonzalez, age 12, Maricruz Gonzalez, age 11, and Mari Loli Mathon, age 12, while they played on a path 
in the beautiful hills of Garabandal in northern Spain. The angel appeared eight times over the next 12 days, and on the 24th of June, 1961, he appeared with a banner at his feet containing a message which the girls could not understand. The first time the angel spoke to the children was on July 1st, 1961, telling them that Our Lady of Carmel would appear to them on the following day. Our Lady did indeed appear on July 2nd, 1961, escorted by two angels. One was St. Michael. On the 4th of July, she appeared again and explained the message on the banner which St. Michael had shown. She told them not to reveal this message until the 18th of October. As promised, the message was delivered in October of 1961 to the assembled crowd. You must make many sacrifices, perform much penance, and visit the Blessed Sacrament frequently. But first, you must lead good lives. If you do not, a chastisement will befall you. The cup is already filling up. If you do not change, a very great chastisement will come upon you. Well, over 2,000 apparitions occurred in Garabandal from 1961 to 1965. These apparitions also included many physical and spiritual manifestations. All of the apparitions were announced to the girls in advance by three interior calls, which the girls described as three joys. The first joy was slight, the second would be more intense, and the third would be so strong that they had to run very quickly to where they knew Our Lady was waiting for them. Even though they ran from different parts of the village, and they would arrive at the designated place at the same time. They would then fall to their knees in a state of ecstasy. Their ecstasies would last from a few minutes to several hours. They would not always have the apparition together. The apparitions were accompanied by many other phenomena defying natural law, such as levitation, ecstatic falls into beautiful sculpture-like positions in which four doctors could not move them. Yet the girls could lift one another as easily as a feather to kiss our Blessed Mother goodbye. They would be seen walking forward and backward over rocky terrain with heads tilted back and eyes looking heavenward. On days when there were no priests in the village, St. Michael the Archangel would give the girls Holy Communion, which was visible only to them. On July 1962, a significant phenomenon took place between Conchita and the Archangel Michael. This miracle was prophesied two weeks in advance. Conchita received a visible communion host on her tongue from the Archangel, witnessed by hundreds of people. This miracle was chosen to call our attention to the reality of the true presence of our Lord in the Eucharist. The final message of Our Lady was delivered by St. Michael to Conchita on June 18, 1965. As my message of October 18th has not been complied with and has not been made known to the world, I am advising you that this is the last one. Before, the cup was filling up. Now, it is flowing over. Many cardinals, many bishops, and many priests are on the road to perdition and are taking many souls with them. Less and less importance is being given to the Eucharist. You should turn the wrath of God away from yourselves by your efforts. If you ask his forgiveness with sincere hearts, he will pardon you. I, your mother, through the intercession of Saint Michael the Archangel, ask you to amend your lives. I love you very much and do not want your condemnation. Pray to us with sincerity, and we will grant your requests. You should make more sacrifices. Think about the passion of Jesus. Visionary Jacinta Gonzalez Moynihan shares her insight on the messages. In my own personal life, the messages have increased my faith. They have helped me spiritually with the praying of the rosary and my family life. 
The apparitions helped to increase the spirituality and faith of the people in the village. Our Lady did not come just for the people in the village of Karamandal, but rather she came for the whole world, for all of mankind. The basic elements of Garabandal are the Eucharist and the priesthood. The Blessed Mother stressed the significance of the rosary, the need to pray for priests, and above all, obedience to the church. Garabandal also prophesizes four supernatural events to take place in the future. First, a celestial worldwide warning. The second supernatural event to take place is the great miracle. Conchita knows the date of the great miracle and will announce it eight days in advance. Everyone in the village and surrounding mountains will see it. The sick will be cured and non-believers will be converted. The third supernatural sign will be permanently visible and will remain at the pines until the end of time. It will be possible to photograph and televise this sign, yet no one will be able to touch it. Fourth, a chastisement conditioned by the world's response to Our Lady's call for conversion and penance. The climate of the apparitions at Garabandal was one of motherly love. Mary revealed herself as a tender, loving mother. She clearly wanted all of us to know that we are all her children. She promised to reward everyone. However, she said obedience to the church must always come first because this gives more honor and glory to God. A new investigation of Garabandal was appointed again in 1986, instituted by Bishop Del Val of Santander. Many people from around the world await the outcome of this new commission and accept in advance the final decision of the church. In the history of Marian apparitions, Our Lady directly communicates with a few chosen people, quite often children. Yet, it is not necessary for her to speak directly in every apparition. She also communicates through her presence, a presence of silence. On the eve of April 2nd, 1968, Our Lady appeared as a radiant light atop St. Mary's Coptic Orthodox Church. The church is located in Zaitun, a suburb of Cairo, Egypt. There is a popular legend or belief that Joseph and Mary passed by Zaitun when they fled from Herod's persecution to safety in Egypt. Often holding an olive branch and sometimes a cross, Our Lady was seen moving among the domes of the church. At other times, she was bowing before the cross or blessing the people below. People of all classes, occupations, and religions saw her in different forms or postures, her appearance always being public and witnessed by all people present, believers and unbelievers. We even had our servant, and she doesn't understand anything in Christianity. And she was jumping up and down because she saw her, and it's like you feel all the chills, you know, it's not like. Uh, a simple thing, it's really very, very touchy and uh, your whole body is different and you start, cry you don't know what, you know, you're crying, you're uh, screaming, you don't know what to do. And the girl started, you know, she was 17, 18 years old and we started asking her, maybe we are not seeing right and we told her, what are you seeing? And she said that uh, she's seeing a lady with a she didn't even know the halo, but she said, with a crown full of bu uh, light bulbs, because that's how bright she was. And um, she, we saw her like in a frame, like in a picture, and then the she, standing as a whole with fluorescent light. She was very neat. On many occasions, she was reportedly seen appearing in many different shapes and surrounded by a multitude of colors. The appearances were also accompanied by miracles of healing, 
which have been verified and documented by a commission of physicians and scientific professors. On May 5th, 1968, the Coptic Church issued a statement through the papal office of Patriarch Kirolis VI, declaring, the Blessed Virgin Mary has appeared several times on the Coptic Orthodox Church named after her at Zaitun in Cairo. The apparitions continued for over two years, occurring two or three times each week, most frequently on feast days or eves of feasts. Her visits lasted from only a few minutes up to eight hours. The crowds grew to an estimated quarter million people. Among these witnesses were Orthodox, Catholics, Protestants, Muslims, Jews, and non-religious people from all walks of life. Dr. Venice Khalil, an eyewitness to the apparitions, expresses her confirmation of the events. Well, I am a doctor, and what I have seen in, in Zaytun, I believe. And I can't explain it to medicine or science, there were a great number of miracles and healings and conversion of faith. It was reported, at times, white or golden luminous doves hovered around the figure of Our Lady at night, flying at great heights and then suddenly just disappearing. This is certainly an unusual phenomenon, since doves do not fly at night. The doves appeared before, during, and after Our Lady's appearances. Another phenomenon associated with the Zaytun apparitions was the presence of incense-smelling smoke, described by one of the bishops as a fragrance as great as it from a million censers. Although no words were spoken, she imparted a powerful message to her children. Did Our Lady's silence represent her loving concern for all her children, Christian and non-Christian? The fruits bear witness to her powerful presence. <laughs>